Are we are we good? Are we live? We're good. Right on. Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us to episode three thousand of oh, yeah. Hear Nothing, See Nothing, Say Nothing. I am of course Bill Schmidt, or better known as See Nothing, and I am, as always, joined by my two very best friends, Hear Nothing and Say Nothing. Gentlemen. Hey. How are we tonight? Hey. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New 2018. Year. Two thousand eighteen. Exactly right. This is our first show. Of the new year, it and is. I'm excited. Yeah. Um, What's new, Mr. Bill? Dude, really, same shit, different day. 2018 feels remarkably similar to 2017, so I'm not really one to buy into like New Year's resolutions or New Year, New Me or any of that, so I don't know. I did- Are you less offended? Oh, uh, no. <laughs> that I'm hypersensitive, always offended- um, so again, new year, same me. So watch yourself, Phil. But all right, all right. How, how about, about how about you, Phil? Any resolutions? Yeah, I was supposed to have my last <laughs> cigar. <laughs> he says as he lights a cigar. <laughs> Actually, l- I'll just check if it's recording. Sure. I'm supposed to have my shit together more. Sure. Mm-hmm. All right. Good. <laughs> All right, so you're quitting smoking, and you're off to a so, fine start. Yeah, so clear, clearly my <laughs> life is going to yeah. shit at the start <laughs> of the year. No, yeah, I was supposed to quit uh, cigars, but I got, I think, 15 cigars for Secret Santa presents from my girlfriend's side of the family. And then the other thing, uh, I mean, I had this before the new year, but I'm I'm really going to be strict on it. On, I want to hit under 200 pounds. Okay. And I'm not allowed to shave unless I do. <laughs> Am I? And, and dude, my fucking I, I have wait. Not even trim. No, no. That's that's what sucks right now because uh, it tickles when you eat pussy when you get a must, long ass mustache. <laughs> yeah, dude, and that smell sticks. Oh yeah, and 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 well, well, I mean, I get horny at work because you get the smell. At sure, work. and all of your I cute go, coworkers. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so well, l- luckily I have the desk over and I can just do my. <laughs> You know, sure. <laughs> Michael Jackson, <laughs> mas- handless masturbating. Sure. No, but um, with all the kids at the daycare. Oh yeah, where you work, or, or the terminal kids who skip for their money. Oh god. But uh, huh? and anyways, I mean, dude, their lives aren't going to be traumatized because they don't got a lot left. You know. The, and, <laughs> and on that uplifting note, John, <laughs> how are you today? How was your Christmas? How was your New Year's? We missed you last time. Yeah, my my apologies. Uh, yeah, it's good to be back. Um, yeah, I've been good. Uh, How was Hanukkah? Good. Bill told me you're having Hanukkah. Yeah, you That's missed right. our last episode because you were observing. I think it was the seventh night of Hanukkah. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I, it was it was all right. You know, I did uh did the regular Hanukkah praying. Sure. And uh, we lit all the candles. Very um, good. Yeah, uh, for uh, for the new year, uh, my resolution is kind of similar to Phil's, minus the cigars <laughs> so, and the so beard. <laughs> it's the same, just minus the cigars. <laughs> yeah, I just want to get way to rub it in, buddy. Get into better shape. So right. I'm at 199. <laughs> okay. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I got. Yeah. So what is your goal? Is there a weight you want to be at? Um, just to exercise and eat better, I guess. But probably like one. 85-ish would be my goal. Okay. Not right too on. crazy, you know. Sure. No, for sure. Are you going to join a gym? How are you going to go about it? Um, Start with the diet. So I'm doing this, like, low-carb thing right now. Oh, God. Yeah. How's that going? It's not too bad. Really? It's not not too bad. So do you eat a lot of protein? Like what's Yeah, up? like yesterday I made um, salmon for the first time. Okay. I went How to the store, bought, like, a pound of salmon. Yeah. It was the easiest thing ever, and it was delicious. I don't know. Like you fry or bake? I I uh, cut it up into two pieces, just wrapped it in tin foil. Sure. Yeah, ate it raw. Water in there. Yeah, Salmon's put it in the great. oven for like twenty minutes. It was like super moist. It was oh, delicious. Nice. And it was really. T- I always have minutes. a t- uh, canned salmon. That's good too. You just put it, uh, mash it up in a uh, salad. I don't know if that's normal, but I love it. I've never had canned salmon. No, yeah, yeah, it's. Good. I I uh, recently. 
have to throw my backpack out because I sh- put a shitload of anchovies on my salad and it popped open. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. If, if I had a nickel for every yeah. time that happened I to defini- me, I know we're in the city. I know we're in the industrial area. I'm not getting rid of an aborted baby here. Mm-mm. No, but so good. It sounds like we're all on I'm the keeping it. What <laughs> we're on the fast track to success for, you know, 2018. Did you do anything fun for New Year's, John? Yeah, I went to a party in Chicago, a friend's um, party. Where at? It was a um, Humboldt Park area. Okay, right on. Yeah, um, yeah, it was it was a good time. They had it was a, they had a Trump pinata. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Good. So after, uh, right, like a few minutes after New Year's, we we uh, tried to break it open. We broke the bat. But then, <laughs> wow, that's that, that's symbolic. Yeah, that's, that's how angry the kids got. <laughs> makes you think. <laughs> was it broken over Trump or just like some random person? It was uh, who liked Trump. No, it point. was broken over Trump. Sure, was, he's got thick skin. Yeah, he does. But uh, eventually, we got the pinata busted open. It was um, it was also a, a balloon party. They had a big, uh, big ass compressed air tank with. Uh, Laughing gas. Laugh, not helium? No. I thought it was helium at first when I got there. Did you get fucked up? No, I didn't try it. Oh, man, come on. Wait, were what? people it was weird, the whole doing like, it? Were yeah. they just like taking hits was, of the It was $20 tank? for a balloon, <laughs> and you get to use it all, all night. Oh, nice. W- weird. Yeah, really weird. The, it kind of sucked, though, because it was really loud, and they put the fucking tank right in the middle oh, of yeah. the living room. So everybody kept refilling and, and laughing. So wait, really unlimited loud. refills for $20? No, yeah, you just buy the balloon for twenty dollars, and and you did, just. Did they seem like they were having fun? Yeah, it was a good time. Everybody had fun, I think. But um, like the balloon people, were they yeah, like having yeah, an extra was, good time? Yeah, but there was also a lot of other drugs. <laughs> oh, nice! <laughs> All right, so yeah. which did you enjoy? The beer. All right, the safe yeah. bet, the yeah, sure I bet. I didn't, I didn't try any of that craziness. Fair enough. Did you ever see Blue Velvet? Um no, that that was the third movie that I saw while I was super fucked up after the New Year's party. All right, well yeah. now we got to backtrack. Yeah, talk yeah. about our New Year's. Okay, should I start or you? Uh, no, take it away. Yeah, so uh, Zach Sandry, who, if everything goes in an ideal world planned, you know, we're gonna have him on the show next time. I think he might have been talking about a. He's gonna be our guest. Exactly right. But um, yeah, yeah, he had a. It's uh, Bill's friend. He holds comedy club. I think he does comedy too, right? He does stand up. He's a musician. He doesn't do stand up. Mm. He's like a singer songwriter, and that man can fucking shred. Like, oh my God. If yeah. you you were at the Halloween show with us, and you didn't really get I, much I, of a taste. No. But um, I left right after you did your uh, stand up. Well, you didn't. Well, actually, you missed a bunch, but like, Sandry is so good. Yeah. Like, he's a great guitar player. Mm-hmm. Um, but he will ideally be joining us the next time we record. Yeah. But we went to that house party yeah. over at his place in Logan Square, a neighborhood of Chicago. Uh, Chicago is a city in Illinois for all of our Irish listeners out there, <laughs> just to keep everyone uh, on the same page. And Logan Square is a neighborhood of Chicago. And we went over there and... I don't know. I drank a lot. I smoked yeah. a lot. It was a good time. It was great. Yeah, I I realized how fucking old I am, and not even kidding. The whole day that I was like hungover, I was watching movies about life, so it made me feel even fucking older. How quick life goes, because I haven't gotten that fucked up in a really long time. In a, re- I I couldn't ha- I couldn't. That's why I was in that heated blanket, all cuddled up like a fucking burrito, and just watching emotional movies all day because I couldn't handle. I I Bill called me. He's like, "What kind of liquor do you want?" I said, "You know, make anything to make White Russian cola. If you could get half and half vodka." And then I'm like, "Well, I'm obligated to bring something else." So I rolled two fat joints. And after I had about a centimeter of the first one, I smoked both, and had about six White Russians and was uh, spooning with. Zach's dog, the rest of the party. <laughs> While my girlfriend got jealous and made a video of me doing it, <laughs> drooling. Yeah. So. Meanwhile, was I was just I was just stumbling from the kitchen 
outside to have a cigarette, back to the kitchen, back to the couch to sit with Phil. Then it's like, oh, shit, I want a cigarette. Stumble back to the kitchen. Oh, hey, stumble outside, have a cigarette, come back in, stumble into the kitchen. You know, oh, uh, 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 stumble back yeah. to the couch. Oh, oh, now I want a cigarette again. So Get I was some just, apple cider chili. <laughs> Get some BBQ chili. Uh, you know, I don't think I had... I only tried one of the chilies, and yeah. it was okay. Mm-hmm. I don't know. And then they were cutting up. <laughs> they had, like, sausage. So I had, like, two little slices of sausage oh, man. and a bowl of chili, and that's all I ate that night. And, like, that's all I ate that day. So I'm, like, I didn't vomit. I don't think I misbehaved. Like, did I, st- Phil, you'd probably remember better than I, did I, like, I, start any fights? Did I say some really nasty things I, to people? I would not remember. I, I was, yeah. Dude. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and say no. I, I killed it. I'm actually it. pretty upset because was the sausage cooked? No. Okay. No, it was just like... Because um, I was kind of in between Mason's legs. <laughs> up, so. not, th- not that sausage. Okay. We, we saved that one for you. Uh, no, it was like some smoked venison sausage. And like I had maybe two like nickel-sized little cuts of it. Like it wasn't that wide... Oh, I yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. That, uh, it's all fucking coming back. Yeah. They were given slices of uh, sausage and cheese. Yeah. I didn't have any cheese, but I had like two little like nickels of sausage. Yeah. So I had two nickels of sausage and a bowl of chili and a lot of beer, two white Russians, smoked a lot of weed, and like that was it. Yeah. I, I, I kept trying to find that third and fourth joint. Which and I thought you had brought those, and now I know like you didn't. You're just being a smart ass. No, no, I, I brought two joints, but I f- right. for you, one was supposed to be for me and for you, but I finished them in ten minutes, both of them. Gotcha. And then, and then there was the person in Zach's room, Dimitri. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, Dimitri wasn't there. It was there was a girl who they were. They said well, you can't smoke joints anywhere but in his room, so she rolled a blunt in there. Or no, no, no. They were passing the pipe. Was that? Kate? I smoked with someone named Kate, I think. Anyway, I it doesn't matter. paying attention to the bowl. <laughs> a good time was had by all. Yeah. Um, so good. We all had good New Year's Eves. And speaking of uh, all this food talk, side note, because I want to finish this shit up and get rid of it because uh, it's good, but as the diet, I don't want to have too much sugar and Kelly doesn't really like them. Kelly works next to a shitload of food places like we get free olive oil and dressing because they have all these samples they get rid of that are expi- so and she also has works to a cotton candy place a so right cotton here, candy place yeah it's a place that only serves cotton candy only cotton candy and it's weird shit because we uh it, we we were gonna make a viral video of gavin they had a sweet baby ray flavored cotton candy Ugh. and we told them it was like chocolate <laughs> and he's just like, eh, I feel like Ross is around. You know? <laughs> no, but um, <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's all right. But I'm gonna move on. Yeah, sure. So, so there's so, a fucking cotton candy restaurant. So I've got Atomic Fire right here. If you want a bucket, you can you can eat it right now. Or whenever I don't give a fuck. What is it? It it's it's like the really. Spicy, you know those red balls? Oh yeah, they're, yeah, they're yeah. Like, oh, the atomic fireballs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like the Ferrara pan. Yeah, you want to feel yeah. right here? It's a huge bucket filled with it. You could finish it in like five minutes, or maybe I just did. I, I, I are there I, any in there? Yeah, it's full. Really? It's full. Yeah, I, it's I cotton candy. It's really light. I, I oh, it's <sighs> shit. I thought it was like the actual like the, the candy like the jawbreakers. No, no, no it's, it's it's cotton candy flavored like it. All right, I'm gonna I, try some. My favorite one. I finished it in fucking five minutes they had a uh, uh popcorn it did it doesn't it doesn't sound good i also have a cupcake and candy cane if you prefer the other uh, no would you mind popping the yeah. foil do you me? want any john or no i'll try a little bit i'm just gonna try a pinch yeah. just to say that i did the cupcake is already open if you want to try that but yeah this, okay got it open oh, you dude. gotta hold the bucket down, i think no i got it i love cotton candy so I remember in my days of being a, well, being more of a fat ass as a kid. You guys ever put cotton candy in your pop? Mm-mm. It's like that uh, pop rock shit. It starts like reacting with the soda really weird. 
Like Mentos? Yeah. Like the Mentos I tried making uh, Ross's face explode. In oh, that's awesome. Let me try That's me try really good. Boat. All right, coming your way, John. Here. So I'll, You can yeah. catch it. It's light. What is the name of the place? Uh, I don't know. What, what does it say? Chocolate Storybook. All right, so. ladies and gentlemen, this episode of Hear Nothing, See Nothing, Say Nothing is brought to you by Chocolate Storybook Cotton Candy Sellers. Did you want, did you want to s- try the cupcake? Hell yeah, dude. Dude, that's... I think that's the second favorite uh, next to popcorn right here, already open. Bam. Yeah, it's pretty good. Right? Like, I didn't know what to... You want to try cupcake? Yeah, I'll try all of them. I don't know if I... Open candy can... Oh, yeah, it's open candy canes open. What's your candy right. canes open, too? Yeah, right here. Cupcake is so good. We we got rid of all our sugar because of my diet. Mm-hmm. So I I love um, Kelly's family got me pumpkin spice coffee. So I had no sugar to put it. So I just put like half the popcorn can- cotton candy as the sweetener. Mm. It's pretty good, ma'am. I think Atomic Fireball is my favorite though. That was really candy good. Tastes like candy cane. I don't like it. Yeah yeah I don't, <laughs> I don't like candy cane. Right? Does Did anyone like candy canes? That one's atomic fire. Mm-hmm. Okay. Would you want one? You want that one? No, I don't. I don't want it. But I like the uh, cupcake one. I like the. You cupcake could. One. You could finish any of them. We're just. I, we're getting rid of. You want it? You I'm want gonna, it? I'm gonna revisit the atomic fireball okay. later on. Um, but moving on. Yeah. So no, for Christmas, like a lot of people gave me gifts, obviously, but a lot of them like wrapped a ribbon around a candy cane and like incorporated that into the wrapping. And it's like, cool, great. Here's something for me to throw out. I don't want your fucking candy cane. Does yeah. anyone like candy canes? I find it as the last. I put garlic in everything, so it's kind of a last resort to not smell like a piece of shit at work. Sure, like and that's. It's like a breath mint, but awful. Cause yeah, like you got to suck on it for like ten minutes. Yeah, I do enjoy like the fruity ones, like the Starburst ones, but like, don't give me like a peppermint candy. Like they're not good. John, they're not good. They're just decoration. Yeah. It's yeah. <sighs> Why not make it out of something else, right? Yeah. Why not have like lollipop flavored? You here? know, and I'll eat like peppermint flavored taffy for days. Or, you know, give me I a just, York peppermint patty. Give me anything that's not a fucking candy cane. I, I don't like uh just peppermint in general. Do you remember Kelly's uh peppermint cookies? Oh, you gotta relight. I'll light it. Yeah, I don't. I don't like peppermint. I don't know. And then Kelly gets like mint ice cream. I just don't like mint. Oh, see, I love mint, but candy canes just fucking suck. You like mint, John? Yeah, I like the mint chocolate chip milkshakes at Oberweiss. Ooh, dude. Yeah, those, those that are really sounds good. good. Do you um? Do you guys eat ice cream in the winter, or is it like a no too cold outside, no ice cream? I do. Okay. Yeah, if it's available, I usually I don't go like out of my way. I'll I like. You know what I do? When I get a craving, I eat it, but like mostly in the summertime, I would say. With, I, I like ice cream in the winter when they because they have the Oberweiss eggnog ice cream. Mm. Or Ooh, just the eggnog. Dude. Right. Well, I had, um, I don't know. I don't really, I'm not a seasonal eater. Like, I like what I like, and I like it all the time. But I had a girlfriend, and it was like during the summer, and I'd want to go to like an Italian restaurant. And she'd say, no, I can't get pasta because it's hot outside and you can't eat hot or you can't eat pasta when it's hot outside and it's like was yes. she trying to get you to eat her out her cold <laughs> fucking vagina yeah no i don't know what her deal was but it's like yeah no i'm just as good as eating you know like i can eat spaghetti just as well in the summer as i can in the winter like spaghetti yeah. is good but you know some people drink hot coffee in the summertime when it's like 100 degrees that's one thing i don't understand i cannot do that sure I, I like it. When, when it's good, like, cappuccino or something. Yeah. Like, same thing. I was at Dunkin' Donuts yesterday, and it was, like, negative five. Someone got an iced coffee, <laughs> and it's like, what the fuck's the matter with you? Yeah. Like, you're looking to cool off? They're looking to mash on that whipped cream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I don't know. So you know, you know what? I Because of this, like, whole diet resolution thing, um, I'm trying to stick to because I didn't explain what I'm trying to do. No bread, no sugar, 
And by no bread, I mean like no carb things. Like if I have pasta, so no pasta, if whole pa- grain pa- pasta, I'll have. I I heard you could have like one cheat day on the weekend. So I made like a whole pot of pasta, but but it's just for one day. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> Get it all in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, t- and, and and dude, it sucks because when you eat all week salads, and that's that's pretty much my diet: soups and salads every fucking day. See, I like and, a good soup. Yeah, and that and that's the thing. That when I'm at work, they don't really they they fuck us with the heat. It's not. It's it's pretty fucking. Cool. My nipples are hard all day, and I don't like eating salad when it's cold because it's how do you you don't want to eat a, what a heated up salad right you want like a bowl of chili or something yeah like, exactly to warm your belly yeah or and and then so when i come home i make like uh uncle ben's rice in there with no you know no noodles then you get the then you get the rice with the quinoa in there or however you pronounce it that you got it and uh yeah that that, that shit's that's really good I'm thinking of oh I I got this Polish beet soup mix which is fucking awesome. Um, I don't believe you. <laughs> you don't like beets? <laughs> no, I, beets I are mean, awesome. beets beets are okay, but are they awesome? Mm-hmm. No, they're not. Uh, I I it uh it reminds me of maybe like being a kid. Sure, my grandma used to make them. So they're and like, I put a shitload of garlic as in everything, so it's super spicy. Sure. Kelly couldn't even have like a spoon. She said it was so spicy. <laughs> it sounds great. Yeah, uh, that maybe it's awesome for someone that's not eating bread or sugar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yes, beet soup again. Yeah. I, what about uh, pickle soup? You've been eating that. Oh no, I never liked. It. I love pickles, but I cannot have pickle soup. That shit, like y- y- instant heartburn, mm. like the opposite of Pepto Bismol. You know, pickle soup. Is that yeah. a Polish thing? Yeah. So far, like the only people I've ever met that like pickle soup are Polish people. So, are there people that aren't Polish that have had pickle soup? Because I've yeah. never even heard of it. Yeah, I've talked to people that are like, "Yeah, I tried this pickle soup. That they're not Polish and they hated it." So weird. When, when I finally got comfortable enough to be offensive at work, <laughs> I was. Uh, <laughs> you got <laughs> fired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we yeah we had to sit down. Yeah. Well, well, I was uh, <laughs> sitting next to these two temps, and I think I uh, there's uh, this uh, black girl that I work with. She brought in soul food, and I said, "Man, that's that." smells amazing and she goes i really it's awesome because i went to my relatives in new orleans this week but i missed the taste of polonia i'm like oh i was there i got that stuffed cabbage uh, pierogi Pierogi. uh, every like i i there was like this package you get where you get everything and i was like that was awesome yeah and then she said she was trying to explain to me what she likes she was trying to like kind of relate and explain what else was on my plate but she didn't remember and i was like okay and meanwhile there's a guy who didn't really speak good English, but he was Polish behind her. I'm like, did it make you tear ass? She's like, ah, kind of. I'm like, all right, it was probably Polish. It's like, what? What was? <laughs> so, yeah. But th- th- that's the way I look like, I don't know. That's kind of the way I explain Polish food. Sure. Gar- garlic, onion, what a pickle. It's very, I think, very acidic. It's good, but it's very cabbage. Yeah, cabbage and everything mushrooms i i never liked stuffed uh cabbage when i was little but i fucking love it now my aunt made it because we oh that's a whole nother story i don't know if i mentioned <laughs> that <laughs> do go on did i did i mention that guys or no not today no. no well i guess i gotta take back my old you know that she's the queen of the cunts and my cousin is not a whore on girls gone wild but she did audition no I said a lot of negative things, but I guess we're on good terms. La- last oh, moment, um, I kind of wanted to get rid of my ma because she drives me crazy. So I'm trying to. I tried to like reunite the family, <laughs> which felt fucking great being the man of the house. And sure, uh, it was a really great awkward situation to make it even more awkward. But my aunt invited us. My ma sucks at cooking. You need fucking handles on your toilet because it's gonna launch you off if you fucking eat anything my ma makes. <laughs> She she'll make like chicken soup and not like the Polish way. She'll get like some, uh, you know, banned MSG Asian bouillon, and put too much in there, so you're just shitting your brains out. And then um, my aunt, dude, she does everything old school. When she makes pierogies, she rolls the dough, rolls the nickels, and and <laughs> the put, game is mine. Puts the nickels in there, and you got a whole pierogi helter skelter in there. No, but. <laughs> 
Uh, That's yeah. Charles so, Manson reference for <laughs> anyone that may have missed it. Well, Man Manson ski and yeah. this uh, the but no. Well, it was so it was good. Um, I got uh pretty pretty drunk, and I made oh I made some homemade advocat for the party, and my it was weird. Um, I I feel like a better person because I came in there. Hating my aunt, hating my co- like. We just didn't speak for you because there's sure. just family feuding. Be- All the women in our, in my family are crazy, but beautiful. I guess. I mean, I guess. Do, Bill, do you want to be my dad? We're still searching. Mm, well, I mean, I've got a lot going for me. If I think I, I bring s- a lot to the table. If I, <laughs> namely my cane and this I, ashtray. If I sit on your lap, will you feed me a- atomic candy, c- cotton candy? Nope, only pickle soup. All right, that's all my children get. <sighs> Come on, dad. no. So well, so it it was pretty cool. Uh, my brother came with his girlfriend. My I came with my girlfriend. Gavin came. We uh, so you went in there hating everyone, but you left tolerating them. I I left loving them because well, <laughs> well, well, you were well, 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 that's the thing. You know, it, it's <laughs> funny because it re it really reminds me of the way I have a fascination with. Re, for example, recently I've been watching a lot of. Russian Revolution and history on Netflix. I just well, like the Bolsheviks. And every yeah, the Cossacks, the whole yeah. a- Alexander II to the third to yeah. Nicholas, and it just really fascinates me because, uh, as opposed to any other history, it's sort of like everyone there is, everything is a mind game. You don't know who's fucking with you. You don't know who's gonna fuck you over. You're gonna get stabbed in the back at any moment. Sure, and it's kind of like that with the women in my family. You don't know who's. <laughs> like you don't know who's oh oh well, this person likes this person now because of this but then oh but they but they forgave them but this person didn't forgive them and it just goes on and on so I try and stay out of it and I just the conclusion I'm trying to make is I don't know who's right and I and I can see sure. both points that both my aunt and my mom can be huge cunts and what sucked is I thought that my cousin Olivia was really I felt bad for her because I felt she was sort of brainwashed by my aunt uh to favor her in her ways sure and um you know my uncle tommy wasu the second <laughs> with his <laughs> pot brownies and everything i i felt like she sort of turned into my aunt but the the truth is she's got a lot of issues that you know she, dude she's fucking she just turned like 21 22 or maybe i'm just trying to sound smart and r- remember what she is but well i mean we're not going to argue with you yeah John, do you know how old Phil's cousin is? Yeah, that sounds right. Twenty-two. I yeah, think. right. Yeah, no, I. I yeah. yeah, and sounds and about right. She, I, when we came there, she's crying. She's feeling shitty, and then in the <laughs> middle of it, I start cracking jokes. I had a ten-year-old kid tell me I'm less mature than Gavin, and I told him I just had a rare condition, and uh, I just sort of soften things up. There you go. And. I just, it made me have a whole view, you know. Sure. Maybe it's my mom who's been the cunt the whole time. Maybe my cousin isn't against us. She just has a lot of fucking issues because of the shit going on in her family. I, I, everybody goes through shit that you don't know. And it's true. It took me a long time to really realize that. So I don't. Know. I think it ended up. It, it ended up on a good note. That's good. I think it's interesting that you go to family functions thinking like, who's on my side, who's not on my yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. That's like that's like tradition right there. Because like. I don't know. I go to family parties and it's like, where's the bottle of whiskey? Who is going to bring me shots? Okay. That's how the men in my family are. Okay. (laughs) I see. Because, like, I kill it at family parties, except for maybe Christmas Eve, because I don't remember much of that. But, Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, it's not like, uh, oh, I don't like this cousin because of X, and I don't trust this cousin because of Y. It's just like, hey, whatever, we're all here. Let's eat a lot of ham and drink a lot of beer. Mm-hmm. So just familial differences. Um, my um, my aunt has this friend that we call Jay Leno because he's <laughs> got a huge fucking chin. But it was funny. Be the uh, I kind of offended him. He was like, "So you're gonna call? You're going to call me Jay Leno again?" And he kind of gained like a hundred pounds, so the chin isn't really visible anymore. I'm like, no, no, we won't. No way. <laughs> don't worry. Hey, we're gonna. I don't know. Hey, we're gonna. You've grown past. Gonna that. call you Pavel Rolls. You know, <laughs> chin. But, but uh, I. <laughs> he was acting pretty weird. He was kind of like that 
40, 50 year old guy there trying to still be hip. Sure. And and he, uh, I forgot what he, how he told me it, but he was trying to start a conversation while all the women were having that cat stare, wanting to pounce on each other. <laughs> so he tries sure. to break the silence by saying, "So what is what is everyone's passion? What is everyone's hobby?" And I started off because, yeah, well, and, and, and I go, I'm like, well, I don't, I play music. I have a podcast now. Well, that is not a hobby. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> then what's a hobby? <laughs> well, hobby is that is your passion. Hobby is something that you are, you do, but you're forcing yourself to do. I'm like, okay, what? Mr. Rapist. Like, what's yeah, <laughs> I don't think that's what a hobby yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't like, and I'm glad that he told me before I smoked weed because that would have really messed. Like yeah. trying to question so myself. What was my, his hobby? I I don't remember. I think he he worked. He was telling that he golfs, that he works for some company and sponsors a lot of golf events, and he doesn't enjoy it. But do you force yourself to yeah. do it because his hobby? I I could see that with golf. I I, I mean, uh, the older I get, the more I appreciate golf. Yeah, like. I, on television and things. Well, I mean, wouldn't you enjoy something like bowling more? No, um, maybe or Monopoly. The sure, but as far as like sports go, like I don't know, especially because you're, you're saying bowling uh, is not. You're saying Monopoly is not a sport. That's exactly right. That's exactly what I'm saying. I'm drawing the line right here, right now. Monopoly is not a sport. But like, well, no, I'm pissed off. <laughs> 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 uh, but no like golf is something you can do like when yeah. you're a senior citizen it's very low impact yeah and i don't know it's kind of actually i think golf is funny because nothing says white privilege quite like golf because the whole game is to get a small ball in a small that's hole. white <laughs> that's that's exactly white so you get a small <laughs> ball in a small hole but you need like five square miles of beautifully landscaped lands to do it. Like, just power yeah, dynamics. Like, well, well, what cocksuckers? I mean, wouldn't it be more challenging to golf in the ghetto? <laughs> you know, you got to shoot over the person who's passed out there, but they may sort of slither forward because they're dying. You know, or mini golf. I was gonna say mini golf. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> or 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 ghetto golf. I guess. I guess. Well, it's easier to get the ball in the hole because the cracked teeth are all popped out. You know. Sure, sure. good. That's that's good. This is exactly where I wanted this discussion to go. <laughs> inner city poverty. Yes. <laughs> inner city poverty golf. Sure. Right. Um, but well, it's it's 2018 and golf has to go somewhere. You know. We've lost Amen. Happy Gilmore. And what? Oh no. I I mean, th we, Wait, did Adam Sandler die? No, I think that was the peak of golf in my life. I'm oh, sure. <laughs> I mean, that was more of a hockey movie, really. He was a hockey player. Yeah. Uh, and then I never really saw Caddyshack. I don't. Was that good? I've never seen it. Okay. I've I've heard really good things. Mm -hmm. Cause that's um what Rodney Dangerfield was in that. Yeah. I think. Yep. Yeah. John, do you like Caddyshack? I saw it a long time ago. I liked it. Yeah. Good. All right. So today's episode of Hear Nothing, See Nothing, Say Nothing is brought to you by the movie Caddyshack. Coming to theater soon. So how do we how do we get people to like inner city golf? Make a video game. Make a video. There you go. That would be kind of like a cool uh, add-on to GTA, to Grand Theft Auto. Like, um, I don't know. Yeah, yeah that's that's true. That. A good idea. You're onto something. You start out in the inner city and you move up to like the rich people who own islands in space. Can't yeah. you already play golf in Grand Theft Auto? Or am I crazy? Well, I mean the the the, the poverty stricken golf. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. yeah. No, I understand now. I don't. I don't think you can though. In I feel. I swear to God, in not Vice City, but maybe you can lift San Andreas. You could totally. Well, maybe I don't, I don't. I didn't play all of them, but I I know I'm pretty sure. You I didn't play five. Vice City to play golf. Or Moving on in <laughs> Vice City, there's definitely a level where you're like stealing a golf cart and fucking people up in a. Oh yeah, club. you're fucking yeah. people in a golf cart. So that's pretty much golf, right? Like, yeah, 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 you're right. Is that Fireball cutting candy around? Yeah, <laughs> uh, this one's not open. I mean, this one is open. 
Was that the fireball? Yeah. My man. There's two buckets of it if you want both. Perfect. No, nope, just the one is fine. Um, Do you want more vodka? Then, or? No, the, I'm, I'm all right. Is that no. shit strong? It's just a lot of sugar. Okay. So I got to like drink a lot of water. What? Are you on the filled diet? No bread, no sugar? Yeah, the, I'm low carb, so yeah, low ah, sugar. All right. You want some cotton candy in the meantime? <laughs> in the cup, pour the vodka right. over it's uh, advocate not on ice, advocate on insulation. Yeah. Right. I am. Um, oh, uh, so <coughs> you guys know the Google Mini. I was showing John our Google Mini in the house. I got one for Christmas. I Kelly got one for free. I don't know how. Something happened. She stole it? Possibly. I, I, I would, I'd be really proud of her if she did. Wouldn't put a pasture. Well, I heard one of my friends say that if it's freaking them out that there's all of them just being offered for free with things that you buy online. There's, there's a lot of them that they're just given for free and you got this thing in your house that is listening on all your conversations. I was thinking it's kind of funny because I, the first thing I thought of, of course, me being a huge mafia nerd, just, uh, all right, all right, we got to talk about that thing. Google. Okay. Google <laughs> put on Frank Sinatra, you know, and, <laughs> Because that thing fucking sucks when you try and turn the music off. Okay, yeah. shut up, you know. Yeah. Okay, Google. Directions to a great place to bury a body. <laughs> so so we were we were messing around with it because I just thought it I I didn't know anything about it. Yeah. Is it cool? And I went It it, it is cool be because you can just find out a lot of we were um you know, trying to find out the weather, random facts. And then eventually I was like, this is stupid, so I'm going to try and make it explode or just offended. <laughs> and I said, okay, Google, are you racist? Sorry, I like everyone. And then I said, okay, Google, why are you so gay? I already told you, I like everyone. This is really what it said. And then I uh, uh here's where it, it made me laugh my ass off because I said, uh, I started saying all these offensive stuff, and Kelly says, "Okay, Google, how do you say Philip shut the fuck up in Polish?" And it said it, but the th- but then a different lady went on, and she had a uh, she had like the Polish dialect. So then when I went on, because we're having this fight here with our sure. Google Mini, I I say, "Okay, Google, why don't you commit suicide?" Ooh. For some reason, it was speaking English, but in a Polish accent. And it said, if you wanted me to shut it down, you could have just said it. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> it, for, it like tweaked me out. I was, I, I didn't, this is, this, the, oh, the Google Mini is a better comedian than me, you know, <laughs> which is not saying much, but. But you not. like it though. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. So for Christmas, my I, brother. I, I, I like it when you cook food. Or when you just got friends over for a board game, you can just be like, you know, okay, play chill Cuban piano jazz. And sure. you, got, you got cool, like, you know. Cuban piano jazz. Yeah. Did you try saying play Kroll Klex? Yeah, it said, I don't understand. Uh, does anyone you understand? You don't. You don't. No one understands Kroll That's when you got angry. It's like some straight up astronaut shit. <laughs> Play something chill, so chill that it feels yeah, chilly. chilly. <laughs> <laughs> so chill, it's chilly. Uh, Playing chill wave. <laughs> uh, so no, my brother got me the Google Home Mini. Yeah. And then my father for Christmas got me the Google Home Not Mini. Like the Google Home Big. Like How, bi- how big is it? Um, like those discuses you throw in the Olympics? Uh, so like the Google Home Mini came in a box that was like maybe the size of my palm like yeah this and the google home not mini came in like a shoe box size okay. but i like i don't know the difference yeah like is there like is the mini just shittier than the full one like is it just, or is a it just smaller or something i have no idea I, I think that it's a bigger speaker and then the mini is for a smaller area maybe like your bedroom sure and then the big one you could probably put in your li- i mean the big one you could have in your living room and you're you could be taking yeah. a shit and be like okay google where's the toilet paper you know yeah so like i don't know so now i've got two google homes 
I think I'm going to make them fight each other for dominance. That and we'll see who wins. Play some bets. Yeah. I think the Google Home Mini is going to be faster. But obviously the Google Home Big has more like impact, like force behind it. So Okay, Google. I want you to throw this fight. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, so we'll see. Truth be told, I'm probably not going to use either because, like, I don't know. I'm, I'm not, not hog hole like that. The, I don't know. I'm not a big technology guy. Like, yeah, I don't. So, we'll see. Like very thoughtful gifts, but it's like, I I already like it just for that music aspect. Sure. And the other thing too, I there were um a lot of artists where I don't, you know, the platforms for Spotify and Google Play and YouTube, they have all kinds of different shit. So I'll put a band that. I'll be like, you know, I for example, I was showing John Electric Wizard. They they came out with a new album two months ago. They're a super Black Sabbath influenced stoner metal band. Fucking awesome. Got John's approval, right? It sound good. Yeah, I liked it. Nice. They came out with a uh, uh, Wizard Bloody Wizard in November, and it sounds fucking great. So I wanted to sound, I wanted to hear more of their shit and. Okay, Google, play Electric Wizard, and they, they're playing stuff that's live, stuff that's unreleased. It's really cool. That they even they even had a Ghost Main or, or a guy that's sound, signed on Ghost Main's label, or, or they work together, Wavy Jones. <laughs> so, okay. so, so they're like, we can, we can only find a few tracks by Wavy Jones, but we'll play you his playlist. You know. So, so why the fuck didn't they have Crow Clex? They didn't understand. No one understands Quill Clex. Uh, this episode of Hear Nothing, See Nothing, Say Nothing is brought to you by Electric Wizard. Coming to your town soon. Do you like Do you like the spontaneous advertisements? Yeah, it's. Uh, it, I'll stop. I'm sorry. This is this is uh, the Get Out movie. Spontaneous, random, distract. No, we're not uh, getting into that uh, again. No, dude, you didn't get that movie. I didn't get it. Right. Man. Quality control. So. Yeah. Uh I went on a road trip recently. You went on a road to Quad Cities, right? Yeah, dude. The Quad Cities, Moline, and did I tell this story already? Um think, No, cuz this happened after Christmas. And did we I? didn't do like an episode after Christmas, did we? I don't think so. Did we? I don't think so. The last one was on uh was it the 14th or something? Something like that. Ross was here. So, um, we'd like to forget about. That. Yeah, let's let's not bring that up again. Um, just kidding, Ross. We love you. Thank you for listening. <laughs> All right, Phil. I'm totally going on the show. Totally defending myself again. Oh. <laughs> All right, you get me angry. <coughs> mm. Excuse me. So I go. I love getting out of Cook County. Yep. For our international listeners out there. Chicago, Illinois is located in Cook County, and it just, everything is so expensive, and I left Cook County to go on a road trip. Excuse me once more. <coughs> just choking on some cotton candy here, it's cool. Um, so we go to Moline, which is on the Illinois-Iowa border, and I felt like a fucking millionaire. So we were at this brewery, and here's what I got. I got a t-shirt. I got a shot of peppermint schnapps. I got a cocktail, and I got a beer. Guess how much it was, John? Um, $14. Close. Phil? $10. It was $25. Oh, okay. You guys think it would be ten dollars for a shot, a cocktail, a beer, and I was <laughs> expecting it was going to be something really like surprisingly cheap, <laughs> dude. I think twenty five dollars is surprisingly cheap. Like that's how much you pay for like a t shirt around here. But I'm trying to minus the Cook County tax, and then right. and then <laughs> maybe they get like all their shit in bulk or make it. Yeah. So so no, dude, and like I left a ten dollar tip, and they're like, "Are you sure? Are you are you sure?" <laughs> and it's like, yeah. Like, if I were at any other bar in Chicago, my tab would have been, like, You'd probably leave, 50. like, 20 yeah. to cover the tax. Exactly right. So, like, I was just walking around feeling like Mr. Rockefeller. We went bowling. 
and I had two vodka Red Bulls. They were four dollars each, and I left him a five dollar tip on an mm-hmm. eight dollar bill. Yeah, and he's like, "Sir, sir, are you sure, sir?" I'm like, "Yeah, dude," because like this is how much my drinks would have cost in Chicago before the tip, like fourteen dollars, like you know, seven dollars each. Yeah, I don't know. So I recommend you guys get the fuck out of Cook County. You'll feel like a millionaire. That's what everyone's telling me. Fuck uh, Chicago. Get out of here as soon as possible. And yet here we are. Yep. Got the struggle. I uh, One thing I'd like to mention before I forget. Sure. We were talking about uh, tar- tards. No, cards <laughs> against humanity. Sure. Well, maybe. I mean, it was uh, an a episode both. with Ross. Yeah. Whoa. But, so, we yeah. Don't car- use that wood, Phil. All right. Tarted medically is no. that? Correct? No, I meant humanity. Don't use okay. the word humanity. Well, we well we were uh, talking about how it was. Well, at least in my opinion, it was very kind of leftist biased, and it just had a bunch of bullshit in there that was sort of I don't know. I feel like it was trying to fuel the attention that the media's taking everything in direction now with. The numerous nonstop Trump jokes, and it's just like, dude, I feel the same. Oh, you mean like the new version of it? That yeah, yeah, it's just uh, just nonstop people just bitching about politics. And, I mean, I don't really pay attention to it. I try not to get into it, but it's, you know, I feel the same way despite however the political climate is. So what happened is it got they were selling it at target we we were talking about it last episode right like cuz kelly gets the updated cards right and mm-hmm. it's all like very politically like relevant you got cotton candy hanging from the left side of your mustache just okay which is amazing because i was trying to make a santa claus beard by attaching the cotton candy to my beard i don't know how you did that <laughs> but we'll talk about it later uh, yeah perfect but that'll be in the uh, bonus features <clears throat> But so so they they banned them from uh, Target because there's just a bunch of people getting pissed off, which I I could see because I feel like the people who are bitching about politics would sort of get offended by some of the jokes in Cards Against Humanity in sure. general. So the people who like dark humor are playing it. So you're sort of like feeding into this whole. I'm offended by everything. Everybody's racist. Everybody's feminist. Every man is a rapist. Everything you know, make bathrooms for everybody, even if you identify as a frying pan. So, uh, and um, they uh, they released this thing and, and it got banned. So I guess we got a rare card collection. Nice. Yeah. Was it pretty racy? Was it? Re- was it I, pretty? I, edgy? I didn't. I didn't think it was too edgy, but I, I mean, they had stuff like, "When is the next? Uh, is there ever going to be uh, the?" I, I don't even. I always forget how you play it, but one of the cards said something like, um, "There's go- whenever there's going to be a gay Republican president or something." I don't know, and, and I don't see how that's offensive. Sure, sure, if he's doing a good job, you could you could just sort of tell there's certain shit, like I said about <laughs> like Get Out and everything. There's just certain things that are said, made to piss people off. You know what I mean? Sure. I, I, I actually, I wanted to mention that. I'm not going to get offensive. Do I have permission, Bill, to talk <laughs> about? <laughs> but, Too late. But, you're already offensive. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, no, I was talking to my friend about how, uh, you know the you know the actor who plays the wife in Jurassic Park, the blonde chick? Mm. She's, the, she's the girl that the guy has a crush on in Blue Velvet. Okay. Well, so so you know what I'm talking about, John? No. You don't remember the the, the that Jeff Goldblum's hitting on the whole movie in Jurassic Park? She's blunt, she's the other uh like person fascinated by by the park. Yeah, no, I, I did he win her over seen in that the movie end? in like well, well, years. Well, no, it's like well what I was saying to my friend is the way, the way me, media is like the number one thing making money right now and it's fueling all this shit. The reason why I say that is one I watched a KKK documentary on Netflix. How was it? Honestly, it was incredibly, incredibly interesting. And this is going to, I'm going to keep back, I'm going to keep forward tracking because, for example, my friend said, uh, 
you know, oh, I deleted this person off Facebook because they're this uh, political movement. Sure. And I told him, well, dude, I have, uh, I have a friend who's, I and I do. I have a friend who's a Black Panther. They fucking hate white people. They actually stopped doing comedy because they only do like comedy against white people. But then I have a friend who just came out of prison and he's like a, a Nazi skinhead. And I and I and he said, well, "How could Whoa. you be friends with both of them?" Do I smell sitcom? Yeah, right. Get Larry David in here, no, but well, well, the 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 truth is, and I can completely relate because I hung out with both sides of those people in real life. I was at a party where there was Black Panthers, and then I was at I got my ass beat to shit at a skinhead party. Both these people, they're still good people. But they got shit, and and predictably in the KKK documentary, they show a whole lot about. I forgot which town. I think it was somewhere in Alabama. Of but, course. But they were having a uh, protest, and then the Black Panthers were coming, and they were showing. Even though it's a KKK documentary, half of it is about the KKK and its history, and then the Black Panther movement and their um, reaction to it. And both both sides are like how do you feel about this person's race? And they're like, oh, well, I think they're they're good people. They just need to keep their shit to themselves. I, I respect them. I could live with them. I could see them at the grocery store. And what? And when they ask them, they're like, well, how did you grow up? And they're like, well, the, like the hillbilly redneck KKK guy is like, well, you know, I, I went to an all black school and he kept calling me cracker, white boy, and, and they would they would throw lunch at me and I didn't really have a father to teach me how to stand up for myself, so I was like, I gotta join the KKK and and then the black guy's like, Well, I never had a father and you know what you know, I had all these white boys in this town, you know, you know, discriminating me, beating me up and it's like, dude, all these are good people who just have some kind of emotional issue who are trying to probably most of them are fatherless both guys that i'm friends with online are fatherless and they're just trying to get their rage out in some way that they they really don't know how to get that rage out you know i mean the the way like when you get older and you're just you're nine to five once you get past that midlife crisis you're working nine to five job you're you got all this stress in you so what so some people don't do shit and they get they're really like pissed off people well some people i don't know like me i i try and exercise some people go to shows some people go to a bar and and socialize with people get you know yeah you 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 know you just you just hang out with you got it you you have to vent somewhere and these are just people who they're angry people and they don't know where to put that anger, anger towards you know sure it's how they cope they're they're confused with life yeah it's and um i don't even know where the fuck i to so, how i got started <laughs> so here's a question for you oh oh you know what it was a uh, uh, quick thing the, the the debate i had at work was somebody po- um i think it, i think it was the black pants guy he posted like oh shit this white bitch getting all her love from this black guy and it was the it was the um, it was the chick from Jurassic Park, the actor. She's got like a like a foot taller black boyfriend, and he's making out with her. And the article says, "This white chick getting all the loving she needs." And it's like that is totally made to piss people off. Oh, for but, sure. But if I was at work, which and and this ha- there's a shitload of black and white couples. They're making out. They're fucking. You know, they're they you could see them. Talking about oh who who's on top tonight on on you know uh, messenger or something it's sure. like I don't give a fuck about that they're they're in love with each other they're great people but you know that shit that's all being fueled by all this media shit and that's what I learned from the documentaries all this shit it doesn't even exist everybody loves each other naturally but you 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 try and find a group that you can uh, make a mob with and hate on because and and that's the people who make these mobs is the people who are bored have a nine to five job and don't know how to vent it you know it was it was pretty entertaining though i gotta admit the one thing that was the most entertaining there was a three-year-old in a kkk hoodie and they're like yeah his first word is what power so i'm like okay great is this a south park episode you know <laughs> it sounds like south park mm-hmm. um so for our viewers out there you were I I cut you off. I'm sorry. Oh well, now I'm going back to my question. You're yeah. good. 
I don't mean to interrupt, but I'm going to interrupt you. Um, oh, white walls. Now I'm <laughs> pissed off. <laughs> uh, Blackfish or KKK documentary? I loved Blackfish. You loved it as in it was a really powerful documentary? Like, Dude, I, I, was, I was crying at the end of the movie. But the KK one, no. No, no, the KK one was very educational and informative on on current state. You know. Okay. You're, t- you're talking about the killer whale movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why, why, why the two? Why those two? Well, they're both documentaries. Yeah. So, well, like, if I had to watch one, like, because I've not seen either of them, which one do you think would be more worth my time? Like the KKK one or Blackfish? I think both, honestly. Okay. I I, w- I would have to say both. One after the other. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Well, well, I I like a lot of documentaries. Sure. I would think I was talking about Icarus, the one with uh. Well, I don't even know if I talk about it, but you go on Netflix. There's what two hundred. Everybody's getting their shit on there. You could be some independent, ridiculous fucking Paul Piper want to make a documentary about psychedelic, you know, Sid Sid Barrett. Sid Barrett's life. Yeah. yeah. Well, Sid Barrett used to wear these color speedos, but people don't know it. You know, <laughs> like. And 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 that's why having those balls that tight. That's actually why he was tripping. No, but there's so many documentaries out there, and they're just so. Fu- some of them are so fucking dumb. I can't even think of like the the origin of paper, which <laughs> you know, or or where where how why is the funny bone so funny? You know, and you and you and you stretch it out in three hours, and that's why I think something like all right, I want I wanted to see Blackfish because I love the ocean. I love killer whales. And then the KKK thing, it's just like it really relates to shit that's going on right now because everybody's saying everybody's protesting. There's all this race thing going on. And I and I I told myself, I'm like, that's another resolution in 2018. I don't want to get involved in that shit. But seeing it was quite interesting. Sure. And the other the other thing too is it that that's the other thing too that you that before you see it. The beginning part tells about its history and the really fucked up lynching, beatings, uh, you know, all that, the hangings. And that's the part that's really fucked up. And they sort of try and explain that a lot of those movements now, same with uh, Black Panthers with bank robberies and, and robbing armored cars and, and just drive bys and selling crack to the community. Like all that stuff is sort of over and it's more uh, just focused on. Um, social issues sure like contemporary yeah like so, so then and now and, and there was a lot of people on both sides on black panther party and KK, where they were like they ask them how do you feel about the political movement they're like they're, and they're they're like i don't even fucking care about politics i'm here because uh we barbecue and it's some place for my kids to hang out other than go to a you know a uh, playground or get into trouble so we hang out here and there's a really great community of people like they don't even they don't fucking care about the ideals or any of it for on both sides. Huh. Interesting. So it may it may it it sort of softened it up a little. You doubt the his all history in the past is fucked up. No matter what you looked up, there's fucked sure. up aspects. But it's re- it really shows the reason why it was good for me was it shows that my argument again that right now I mean think about think this is the way I look at it. You got shit like Google Mini, where you say hey. What's the temperature today? What's it going to be on Sunday? And it tells you. You got shit. Oh, um, has, I don't know, what's the murder count in Chicago? And then it crashes. No. But you, you got all these things. You got And you got Google itself. You got YouTube. All, all this information. I mean, news is, why the fuck does anybody even own a, a like local television? You get all this info. So media has to control people's minds. To try and come up with something really fucked up like these clickbait articles to to fuel something that doesn't even exist because I used to get anxiety reading all this crap about about race and like oh my I have to really watch myself when I'm with people and then you go somewhere like to work to a bar to a show and it's like this shit only exists virtually because of because of media fueling it so it made me happy to know that these people can actually get along with each other if they weren't completely brainwashed by what the dying and fading away of media and news is doing, you know? 
Fair enough. Also, just because, and a point I want to bring up, yeah. is just because there's one person talking on a documentary doesn't mean that that's representative of a whole group. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there could be KKK dudes out there that are like, oh yeah, dude, like, black people, hate them, want them all to die, but they're not going to interview him. Yeah. Because, like, that doesn't flow into what they want the movie to be about. Yeah. Same thing just as much with the Black Panthers. Like, I'm I'm sure there's fellas out there that are like, yeah, white people don't really care for them, want them all to leave, hate yeah. them. Yeah. You can know, I, so. Can I use your lighter? Yeah. Not to interrupt. <laughs> but I'm going to interrupt you. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I definitely, definitely see that. Um, you know what I mean? So it's all, like. You, you know what I'm really loving about, um. These, uh, how far and dangerous they can take these actors. Because how you said, well, I'll like this real quick. Light a cigar. This shit's so much strong when, you know, you're burning your untrimmed mustache with it. I was going to say, you're not shaving. And, like, I don't mind not, like, trimming my beard, but my mustache. Like, I have to trim that, because otherwise it gets in my mouth, and it's just, like, yeah, uh, really yeah, unpleasant. Saying it's really weird to make out now. <laughs> I so, wonder why. I am the walrus. <laughs> Cuckoo, ka Well, uh, no, well, how, how you were... It, so you were saying it, documentaries. Yeah, like, yeah, it, it's funny how you were saying um, they might not interview the uh, the dangerous sort of people who are really sort of extremists. Have you guys heard of oh, th- that whole hungover day? I just watch all of fucking Netflix. No, yeah. but have you guys heard of the show Dope? No, just the band. Yeah, yeah. American no. Apathy. No, yeah. d- dude, I highly s- well at least the sh- they have a episode on Chicago, and what they do is they take. Uh, once again, this is my review of it they sort of put dash cams on th- they go to each city and they try and study how our drugs and drug wars run in that city and they go to chicago and that shit is fucking crazy because i'm watching this and i'm telling myself how how are these people not in trouble Be- because they put the cams on the cops in the city they take them to the the evidence room and they're like you know i i, I think when it was filmed it was uh it, it was it was march 2016 and the cops are saying, you know, we're getting ready for Memorial Day. That's when the most murders happen. That's when the most drugs are sold. Right now, this is what we have. He's in a room the size of my bathroom, and there's he throws down this. It, it's the size of, like, a Super Nintendo. It's like, this is worth $3 million of heroin. We've got 40 more boxes of this that we've already busted. And he's he says it's 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 like 20 weeks or something away from memorial day he's like it already started and this is what we have imagine how full this room is going to be and then they take the dash cams on all the gangs i think they interview the vice lords mm. obviously all the gang members got uh bandana masks and purge masks on mm. but it is fucking crazy <laughs> they got a guy uh they got a guy that goes from indiana to chicago and he's the arms dealer and that shit is fucking nuts. They got like silenced Uzis that you see in, I think, like GoldenEye or Call yeah. of Duty. James Bond, yeah. The co- the coolest one they had. Because I couldn't believe it because he's like, oh, this is a Glock. This is the best, most accurate pistol you can get. It's, uh, I forgot what he said. It was like a really strong steel, and that's why it's best because it's the most accurate. He's like, this will go for 1500 And then he pulls out this, it's a custom built it's an ak-47 so it's got an ak-47 clip but it's modeled on the 1930s tommy gun and and it's it's chrome like actual silver jewelry plated so it looks like something out of a gucci main video and he's like oh this will go for 2500 i'm like that's fucking cheap i gotta find this guy (laughs) check ebay yeah (coughs) but it's it's really creepy and so I don't know if that really goes in, ties into what you were saying, how they might not interview all the people. But I, what I'm saying is I watched this thing. I was like, 
I don't even know that I was like, you know, I, I don't even know that this is going on right. in Chicago and it could all <coughs> God. <coughs> cotton candy. No more cotton candy. <coughs> You're getting that cotton candy lungs. <coughs> it's a new right. new well, found cancer. Cotton candy's bad for you. You don't need cotton candy. But like you don't like you trust that that's like real, but you don't know that that that's the real like yeah. But but th- but that's with anything. I'm like you know? and, I'm, and 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 th- and you know that's the other thing. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I'm going to. <laughs> that that's the other thing with with anybody. Um, I I think that's why I would say I'm liberal, but everything now is alt left. And what I mean by that is anybody you speak with, well, you you you're just a you're just a fucking rich privileged talking about statistics and and percentages well yeah statistics are evidence that's called due process that works yeah but you don't know each and individual person but then here's our issue where we're saying you can't trust this individual person so obviously what i'm saying is there's a problem and there's a lot of excuses being made i'm just saying and that's why when when they interview uh bunch of people in a documentary i kind of trust it so especially that that guy was the he was one of the founders so i would uh, well the kkk one. And, and then the black panther one i think he was like a third generation of uh um a leader that was jailed I sure. don't know. a fine legacy yes uh, but if i was an arms dealer in chicago yeah and someone reached out to me like hey dude you want to go on camera, be a part of this documentary? Yeah. I'd say no fucking way. Yeah. What I'm dealing, or what I'm doing, and what I'm dealing is super fucking illegal. Like, you keep yeah. your cameras as far the fuck away from me as you can. Also, how do you know who I am? Who's a snitch? Like, I, it was it was made by a guy in, um, he was British from, uh, he's uh, BBC, which is why I liked it, which is why I liked it more, because he's not biased. He doesn't know what the fuck is going on in Chicago. Sure. And so he'll be like, well, hello, I, I, I'm, a, you know, I'd like to... Quite. <laughs> Jolly good guns. Are, are you, you guys mad? Or are the police mad? The Bollocks. You're tell mad. me, lads. Tell me about the guns you're selling. Yes. Like, I don't, I don't know. I'm very, very skeptical about anything I read well, or... I mean, if, if you're... Oh, and, and all the voices, is, well, especially all the gangbangers, all their voices are completely warped. It sounds like a tobacco sure. song. <laughs> or Black Moth Supreme. <laughs> yeah. 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 Which made it a lot scarier when you got a chrome plated Tommy gun with that voice and then you got a, you know, purge mask on. Right. But maybe that was just part of how they're like trying to convey it yeah. as the truth. Well, like, I oh, what would make this scarier? They don't want to disguise their voices, but let's just disguise it. Make yeah. it all the more intense. And then what well, what made it even cooler is they, they put it on the cop side too. And they showed an entire raid of a crack house, and how you're supposed to like knock a certain amount of times, and 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 um, I don't know. It, it was it was interesting and it was dangerous, so it was kind of cool. Sure, especially, you know, the hospital that I go to for my help. It's like five blocks away from there, that neighborhood. Right. So so it reminds you, like, hey, I know that place. Yeah, that's where I bought my Glock. If I overdose on crack, I'll you know get the hospital right there. Sure. That anyway, I don't know. I'm skeptical about everything, but I I I could see that, st- and and I could see that I completely understand the skepticism, yeah. and I'm gonna keep rambling about documentaries. Sure, <laughs> because the, the other thing did I go, did I tell you guys about Game Changers? Mm, wait, Game Changer was the Sarah Palin movie. Did you did no. you see that? No, no, it's not that good. No, no, no. I well, so this wasn't a documentary. It was a. Uh, I guess biopic, kind of like that Tupac movie. Mm-hmm. Um, it was. Ba- have you ever heard of that, John? Game Changers. No, I haven't. Dude, that is super fucking interesting. But not the sailor or the Sarah Palin. Not one. not the Sarah Palin. Okay. This one was made only for TV, so it was suppo- it was not supposed to get a good reaction. A lot of people don't like it because uh, well, what it's about is how Grand Theft Auto got fucking huge. How it went from um, only being in the UK and like and and it makes. For me and John, I think it's funny only because I remember when you gave me that ripped version before GTA came out in uh, America. Do you I, no, I played it first in America. 
You did no, but you had that like burned copy or something. That was probably from Europe, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so it so it, and, and then and then once it got big, it went to the whole GTA in, U, in London or whatever, and then it went to yeah. two and three. Well, it's 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 about the whole biopic is about that moment between where it started getting huge, and then when Vice City came out, there was a kid who <laughs> stole a cop car, shot a whole fucking place up. And then, and it sort of tells the story about how, like, the lawyer uh, tries to. It's it's all the Wait, bullshit. Was about it Jack Thompson? I don't remember. Do you know the lawyer's name? No, so I don't know. He's a guy that's was, really was anti super, video game. Was he super like Catholic? Probably. It was played by Bill Paxton, so I could see Ooh, that. Ooh, okay. But I love Bill Paxton, but um, and, and here's the reason why they a lot of people didn't like it. The the guy who made GTA. Was played by Harry Potter, the Daniel, Daniel Radcliffe. Th- yeah. But but it's really cool because what they do is so they take these three guys from London and it shows how the the reason why it's a biopic and it says it's based on true events is because it tells the story of the GTA side. So for legal reasons, they don't want to you know if it's biased against the gaming board and this fucking lawyer, you know they want to be like, oh well, this is actually fictional. So anyways, these three guys that made GTA. It gets fucking huge. Uh, Vice City. They're like, what are we gonna do next? You know, we made GT. What's the one? I think it's three, where the guy looks like he's Max Payne, and he doesn't talk. Is that the one? I have no idea. It's like New York City, and the guy doesn't talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That is, but but it's still, but it's not like overhead view. It's third Correct. person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they made that one. That yeah. hit off. They that made was like that. the first third person one that they did. Yeah, yeah. And then they move on to Vice City, and then this shooting happens. And they're th- right. and while they're getting contacted, like, oh, you're gonna get sued. This guy made a uh, shot up a place. They say, well, um, what are we gonna do next? Fuck, we don't give a fuck about this. It, it's the same shit as like Columbine and trying to hassle sure. Marilyn Manson for his music. They're like, they're not gonna go after us. We'll win. So the so the Daniel Radcliffe, he's like, what are we gonna do? That's gonna be totally super American, only American, and about their society. And they're thinking of making San Andreas. So these three guys, they go to Compton and just live there for like, I think like two weeks, and they're they're literally mapping out an entire area in Compton vir- to be virtual. And how you were saying like, oh, if you walk up to a gamer and you're like, hey man, do you want to be part of this documentary? They almost got shot like three times. They show how they went up to like a bunch of crips, and they're like, what the fuck are you guys doing here? And they start talking like in an English accent and all trembling. They go, oh, we're making a video game. Do you guys want to be the star? You know, and and they that's that's pretty much what they did. So what do you so what do you guys do? Show us what a dr- yeah. show, show us what a drive boy is like. All right, where do you put your graffiti? You know, and and that's kind of that's pretty much how GTA was made or San Andreas was made, which is kind of cool. Which one of my favorites? Yeah, so oh, much character customization. Yeah. Like you build up weapon skills. That was a good one. Mm-hmm. Like how like uh, what's his name? One of them is based on Ice Cube. One of them is based on Easy E. That's my favorite <laughs> one. I yeah. forgot what his name. Big is. Smoke. Yeah, yeah, Big Smoke. Gotta get back to Grove Street. Yeah. Uh, so that that was really cool. I, I I obviously I don't think Bill Paxton lawyer won because what we're on GTA Five now. Yeah. So. Yeah. GTA Six probably soon you think yeah probably five has been around for like yeah like four or five years. years is it has it been seven really has Maybe it been that long i don't know something like that though man oh and the other oh that's what was funny do you guys know about hot coffee in there yeah hot coffee the, the sex app yeah that's yeah. after the lawyer tried to fuck over the whole grant the ro- rock star that's what he was trying to go after is just rock star in general yeah after he tries to fuck him over they're like you, you you don't get shit that was just a dumb kid who k- shot up a bunch of people and stole a police car like why why isn't every gta fan doing that you're full of shit and then they found that because of coding and all that, they found the hot coffee scene, and he's like, oh, "Well, well, I have Catholic values, and you know, the, the, here's here's two people fucking. Yeah, that that fuck scene is ridiculous. It's like two <laughs> blow up dolls on each other because yeah. the graphics, you know. So, it was that was interesting. Should I keep ranting about documentaries? <laughs> I'm done. I think now is a good time to take a break. Yeah. Am I water break? Yeah. yeah. Do a quick water break. I'm gonna go to the bathroom. 